Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is remove the tube that used to be in that socket. Here it is. It's a 6AT6. And we're going to test it over here on this Sencor tube tester. This is a TC28. I like this tester more than most of the other testers, partly because it's quick, but also because it does a better job of testing high power tubes like rectifiers and beam output tubes used in audio and output stages of radios and TVs. So let's get the book out and see what we have to set here to test the 6AT6. Okay, here's the two tester book and settings for a 6AT6. You may notice that there are three separate tests and up at the top of the list it tells you what those are. You set A in this case, there are no A settings. You set B, which is the filament, to 6 volts. And then you set C to three different positions, F, G, and G. The first G setting you do with the D setting at 5 and the second at 6. Here we are, have it set up, and the socket is socket number 4. B, which is the filament, is set to 6. The load, C, is set to the first position. And then over here, you'll notice that it says set up, rotate for shorts. So the first thing we're going to do is turn it on. and. Hopefully the filament will glow, and it does. And then we'll wait a short while, and then we'll rotate this setup switch through all the positions. The first position is labeled HK, which means heater to cathode short. And you notice that the meter is reading zero, so there's no heater to cathode short. Now we'll rotate the switch watching the meter in each position. Now every now and then you'll notice it'll flicker like there, but it should come back to zero. If it doesn't, there's a short. There's another flicker, but it came back to zero, and another one. Okay, now we set D F. Or I'm sorry, C to F. And we set D to 1, which is where it is. Now we turn to emission and watch the meter. Okay, that's a pretty good section. And now we go through the other three tests, which I'll do now. The first is to set the function to, or the load to G, and then use 5 and 6. So we'll turn set up to 5, this to G and try emissions again. That one's good. And now we need to go to 6. And that one is also good. Now, if we want to check grid leakage, we, which is one of the good features of this tube tester, we turn there. The meter should drop down near zero. If there's any grid leakage or secondary emission from the grid, it will show up as a meter reading. In this case, you notice the meter's reading essentially zero. So, that 6AT6 is good, at least as far as this tester is concerned, and should work in this tube tester. The next thing we're going to do is test that Type 83 tube there. 
see if I can get it to where you can read the type number pretty easily. Yeah, let's get a lot of focus there. There, 83. Okay, I've removed the type 83 and I'm going to test it, but I'm going to have to use a different tester because if you notice, this tube tester does not have a tube socket that will match this. This is a 4-pin. It's a very old style. It was first uh, used in the 1930s and was discontinued by the late 50s or so. They just weren't making tubes like this after about 1960. So this tube tester, which was made in the 70s, doesn't have that type of tube on it because they were no longer being used in new equipment. So we'll have to get another tube tester out.